Today's Destined for Victory message, Kingdom First Living. Here is Pastor Paul. God has no vested interest in blessing people who don't know what the blessings are for. And we've got to get good at seeking first the kingdom. That means we've got to get good at living under the rule and control of God. We've got to get good at saying, Lord, my life is all about what will do your will and what will please you. Time is out for people to expect God to be some cosmic bellhop or Santa Claus. In these closing hours of time, we need to be about our father's business. We need to decide that for God I'll live and for God I'll die. Jesus is soon to come. I said in the earlier message, Jesus coming is imminent. He is going to be here before we know it. For we are in the last of the last days. And that means we've got to get down to some serious kingdom business. And I believe God wants to move and he wants to bless his people. But the blessings have divine purpose attached to them. And so we've got to be about our father's business. Now, I want to begin to explore this theme and to apply this business of kingdom first living in some very practical ways. So I opened the series by asking the question, what thing or things would you like to see in your life that aren't current realities? For some of us, they would be uh, relational in nature. I want to start there. Some folks would say, I really need God to bring a relationship into my life that isn't there yet. Some singles say, I really want a spouse. I need to get married. I'm tired being single. And I need to get married. And I left off in the last message saying, if you think that marriage is a blessing without you understanding God's purpose for it, you are in for a rude awakening. If you think marriage is all about you being happy, you having a wonderful feeling, waking up next to somebody who just loves you and does everything you want and makes you feel good and affirmed. You got some learning and understanding that has yet to come into your life. Marriage can be a blessing, but marriage can be a curse if you don't know why God would give you a husband or a wife. Some people would say, the relationship I'm missing is a child. Some married people say, we want children in our home. We want to hear the patter of little feet. We want to hear the giggles and we want to be able to see them grow up and have those fun times. And if you think God will give you children and yet you won't know what to do with them, you got to understand that God has a purpose for every blessing he would introduce into your life. And so I want to illustrate this from a case study in scripture. I want you to go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 1. And I want us to really begin to apply these principles of kingdom first living from the pages of scripture. In 1 Samuel 1, you run into the marriage partnership of a man named Elkanah who had two wives. And in their day, God was tolerating polygamy. God was tolerating it. He never ordained it. His plan and purpose was clear from Genesis that there was to be one man married to one woman. That's marriage. That's the only thing marriage has ever been. That's the only thing marriage will ever be. We can come up with our own homemade carnal definitions, but it won't be recognized in heaven. God said a man is to marry a woman and they too, one man, one woman are to be united and they become one flesh. However, because of the hardness of men's hearts, we find that as fallen man moved throughout the generations, they fell short of God's ideal and polygamy was introduced into the world and God tolerated it for a season. Jesus, when he arrived on the scene, he corrected it. He says from the beginning, this was not God's plan. And he came to reestablish God's plan. So I'm here to tell you that we're going to read about a man who had two wives, but those days are over. Brothers, don't trip. <laughs> don't trip. Those days are over. Don't sit here and fantasize. Wow, that must have been nice. You don't understand. 
You don't understand. You don't understand that you, you got your hands full with one. You got all you can do to take care of one. You know your ego thinks you can handle more than one. But don't let your ego write a check that reality won't cash. If you're finding it difficult to please one, to make one happy, believe me when I tell you, you don't want to take on any more than that. And here you find Elkanah, he's married to two women. One wife here is Peninnah and the other one is Hannah. Now, when you look at this text, you find a unique situation. They're living in a time when they are to annually offer sacrifices to the Lord at Shiloh. And so their custom was year after year that Elkanah, we're told in verse 3, would go up from his town to worship and sacrifice there at Shiloh. And whenever the day came for him to do this, he would give portions of the meat to his wife Peninnah and to her sons and daughters. This woman has sons and daughters by her husband. But look at verse 5. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her. He loved his wife Hannah in a special way. He had a special place in his heart. One of the problems, in fact, in these years, during this time, this dispensation when polygamy was tolerated was the man didn't necessarily have the equal feelings of love and affection for the wives. So there were wives who felt more loved, more cared for than their counterparts. And of course, the counterparts would be jealous of his love and affection. And the Bible says he would give double portion to Hannah because he loved her and secondly, because the Lord had closed her womb. So get the picture now. You got one wife, Peninnah, who has sons and daughters she has given to her husband. And there's another wife, Hannah, who he has a special love and affection for, but she is barren. And the Bible says she is barren because the Lord has closed her womb. I talked in another message about what do you do when God closes a door? How do we handle closed doors in our lives? Well, here we come to a text where we've got God closing a womb of a married woman. Now in her day, it is a disgrace for a married woman to not bear her husband's children and especially a son. And so here is a woman who is loved by her husband, but who is unable to give him children. The Lord, we're told, has closed her womb. So the dynamics are set up. You see what's going on in this family? You got one wife who has kids, but doesn't feel that much love coming from her husband. You got another one who feels his love, but has no children. You can see this is a mess getting ready to happen. And I'm glad God put these kinds of stories in the book because he wants us to live according to his plan and purpose and we have to do it while dealing with real life stuff. Up next, the rest of today's Destined for Victory message with Pastor Paul Shepard. He's Senior Pastor at Destiny Christian Fellowship in Fremont, California. And we want to thank all of you for your prayers and financial support and to let you know they're having a profound impact in the world. As God leads, please consider making a generous gift to Destined for Victory today. Donate by calling 855-339-5500, or you can give securely online at our new and improved website, PastorPaul.net. Once again, PastorPaul.net. Do you have pockets of emptiness in your life, areas where desires have gone unmet? A word of encouragement is coming your way next in the rest of today's message, Kingdom First Living. Once again, here's Pastor Paul Shepard. Your Bible is full of real life 
stuff. Your Bible is full of day-to-day challenges. Your Bible is full of family dysfunction and love gone bad and people with false motives and bad feelings. Your Bible deals with where things really are. And that's why the Word of God is so inspired because God shows us that from real life situations, all of us can graduate to fulfill his plan and purpose. So look at this scenario. You got a married man, Elkanah. He's got two wives, Peninnah and Hannah. Peninnah has him set up with sons and daughters, but she doesn't feel that much love from her husband. Hannah is feeling his love, but she is missing children. Isn't it something how life tends to leave us with these pockets of emptiness. Have you stopped to notice the pockets in your life? You might have something going good over here, but just do an inventory. You'll find other areas of your life where you feel barren and empty. And you know what? Jesus said, That the key to fulfilling God's purpose is to understand that life is not about the pursuit of the things that are on our hearts and minds. Jesus said in Matthew 6, the pagans run after what they need and desire. The pagans base their lives pursuit on getting things that they don't yet have. He says, but God is looking for people who will seek first his kingdom, who will say it's really not about personal fulfillment. It is about, Lord, I want to be in the center of your will. When it's all said and done, God, I am here to do your will. So God sets us up by making sure all of us have pockets of emptiness, pockets of unfulfillment. Show me anybody. I don't care who they are. I don't care what they have. Some of you are envying people who have the things that you don't have. But I guarantee you, if you get to know them, you'll find pockets of emptiness, pockets of frustration, Pockets of futility. You can find somebody who's married and they wish they could get out. (laughs) While finding somebody who's single and they are dying to get married. (laughs) Find somebody who wants desperately to have children and feels like I can't make it without children. And you find somebody else with children who say, my Lord, these children going to drive me up the wall backwards. Find somebody who has money and you say, boy, they got to have it made. And the truth is their life has never been so messed up until they got what they now have. Meanwhile, somebody else who doesn't have it is clamoring for it, thinking that's the key to success. And the person who has it said, I would give anything to go back to the simple life I once knew. You're going to have pockets of emptiness, pockets of futility, pockets of frustration. It's called living in this world. God himself sees to it that those pockets are there. You know why? Because God loves to set before us the choices. What will you do with your pockets of futility and frustration? Let's look at what happens in this story. And I think you'll get some insights for your own life and how we are to apply the kingdom first principle. The Bible says, as a result of these pockets where Peninnah has children, but not the love of her husband, at least in the way she wants to feel it. Hannah has the love of her husband, but she's looking at what she doesn't have, which is children. So now look at verse six. Because the Lord has closed Hannah's womb, Her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. God will see to it that you not only have pockets of emptiness and frustration, God sees to it that you have haters. Can we talk? Y'all got a little time? 
God sees to it that we have haters. Haters are nothing new. Just the term is relatively new. But the reality has been as old as man. One of the signs of carnal human nature is we take out our frustrations on other folk. We try to feel better about ourselves by putting other folk down. So here you have a woman who has children, but not the love that she wishes she had, that she sees Hannah having. So since I can't get the love that Hannah has, I'm going to make Hannah feel bad about what she doesn't have. I'm here to tell you that when you are ready to graduate to kingdom first living, you're going to find God dealing with your natural carnal tendency to get ugly with other people. Because in order to do the will of God, you've got to understand that no person alive is responsible for the shortage that is in your life. That God himself is the one who has begun the good work in you and God himself is the one who promises to bring you to the place of fulfillment and purpose so you don't have to sweat what other people have or what they don't have. I want to ask somebody here today that if you are ready to graduate to the place of divine purpose, you are going to have to stop sweating other people. Go with me to Psalm 37, the same chapter of the psalm that houses the promise that if we delight ourselves in the Lord, he'll give us the desires of our heart. And let me show you something that is said in that psalm before you get to that wonderful verse about delighting in God and receiving his promises. Psalm 37, beginning at verse 1. Do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and watch this and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. In those verses, you have a word for the antagonist and the protagonist. You have a word for the person who's trying to get on other folks' nerves, and there's a word for the people who are the victims of the irritators, the haters. When God is at work in your life, he says, don't worry about what's going on in other people's lives. Your blessings have nothing to do with them. My plan for you has nothing to do with them. I want to ask somebody today to lay envy on the altar and never pick it up again. You know what envy is? Envy is when I am more focused on what you have that I wish I had than I am focused on the God who promises that if I'll put him first, he'll give me everything I need and give me the desires of my heart. Some of us will never get anywhere until we deal with the tendency to be envious. Envy makes you look across the driveway or across the street and say, what are they doing with that? Envy will make you look across the church and say, now how in the world did she get a man like that? Now, she tore up from the floor up. <laughs> what was he thinking? What does he see in her? Doesn't he see all this fineness right here? I'm smart. I'm intelligent. I actually have more than a body. I have brains. 
That girl's so stupid when you tell her it's chilly outside, she goes and grabs a spoon. <laughs> that girl's so dumb, it takes her an hour to cook minute rice. What in the world is she doing getting one of the prized single men in the church? That's envy. That's when, because of what you don't have, you decide to set your aim on people who have what you desire and try to frustrate and irritate and talk them down and mess them up. And I'm here to tell you, you will never get where God wants to take you in life until you let go of envy.